Ariati, I come from Indonesia. I'm a clinical pathologist and uh, infectious disease con consultant. Um, thank you. I have an opportunity to share my uh, topic about diagnosis of dengue virus infection, especially this AGE anti dengue rapid test. Why rapid test? Because in my country, we need a simple test that uh, we can have a high validity. And this is the world map. We know that the Aedes aegypti mosquito with the dengue virus inside usually exists in a, sorry, in a tropical and subtropical country include Indonesia, where I am from, and this is Indonesia. We have so many islands, and I live in a Java island in Surabaya near Bali, perhaps. Uh, usually people know Bali, but no Indonesia. <laughs> uh, if a patient come to the doctor with a three days of fever, sore throat, myalgia, so what is diagnosis? It could be malaria, it could be chikungunya, it could be leptospirosis, it could be upper respiratory infection, it could be dengue virus, such as dengue fever, or dengue hemorrhagic fever. All of the disease uh, in my country, oh, there's, we know there's a dengue virus infection can asymptomatic and also symptomatic after incubation period from the bite mosquito for two to seven days. It could be uh, antibiotic fever, dengue fever, or dengue hemorrhagic fever. In the grade one or grade two, no shock, but if grade three or grade four, we call it as a dengue shock syndrome. Why we have to, uh, it is important to distinguish between dengue fever or dengue hemorrhagic fever because it's a difficult to distinguish from the beginning. But in the dengue hemorrhagic fever, always there's plasma leakage. And dengue fever more often accompanied with symptoms such as headache, myalgia, retrobal bear pain, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. But dengue fever can also show bleeding. But pay attention if we have a, the patient come in a fever of depression when the temperature is decreases. Usually doctor or the patient uh, suggests that's already convalescent, but it can severe. So this pay attention of the condition of fever at depression. And the prognosis of dengue fever is better than dengue hemorrhagic fever. The criteria of uh, WHO 1997 of DSF is acute fever two to seven days with a minimal one sign of bleeding manifestation such as rumbleed or tonica test positive with the thrombocytopenia below 100,000 uh, 100, per milliliter and a minimal one sign of plasma leakage. We can see the hemoconcentration with the increase of hematocrite 20% or more compared to baseline or the decrease of hematocrite more than 20% following fluid treatment or the other sign of plasma leakage such as peril effusion, ascites, hypoproteinemia or hypoalbuminemia. This is the criteria for uh, dengue hemorrhagic fever and dengue fever from WHO 2011. So some doctors still use the WHO 1997 or, and the others uh, use the WHO 2011. We look here with the difference is the, in dengue fever, there's no evidence of plasma leakage, but in dengue hemorrhagic fever, there's a plasma leakage. Usually, uh, you can sh we can uh, look, there's a hemoconcentration. This is the diagnostic tools for dengue virus infection. Usually, uh, we have a dengue for NS1 antigen by immunochromatography or ELISA and virus isolation by culture, but it needs time 
one to three weeks and RNA detection uh, with PCR. Now the PCR already not just conventional, but also we have a real time to know the typing for the dengue virus. And for serology, we have uh, IgG and IgM to, dis to differentiate between is it primary or secondary infection. If somebody have a uh, once a bite of IDS IGT with uh, dengue virus inside, even is asymptomatic or this is undifferentiated fever or dengue fever, this that is already primary infection. So at that time, the IgM will increase in the third or five days and achieve the level. Uh, the peak levels uh, in two weeks and then decrease in three until eight months. It's very long time. And the IgG in primary infection, it will increase in about 14 days. But if, if somebody uh, pass again in the second uh, or the third or the fourth, so we call secondary infection. At that time, the IgM secondary usually in the low low level than the primary. We can look here, but in IgG, it will increase in the two or three days already high. This is the cause of dengue illness. This is if the patient suffer from fever. In the first day, already viremia, and that time it's a good time for take for culture or for PCR or for NS1. But for IgM, need time about five days, or uh, it will increase. And the IgG in the secondary, it will increase in the second or three days. So, what is the laboratory disorders in dengue hemorrhagic fever? Usually, we mostly, fa mostly found is uh, thrombocytopenia below 100,000, and also leukopenia and hemoconcentration, usually under the three to four. And how to know there's a plasma leakage is from hemoconcentration or hypoalbuminemia that we can see in the chest x ray, there is a pleural effusion or ascites. And also, there is a increasing of serum transaminase like AST more than ALT. And if there is a prolong of PPT or APTT, there is a risk of bleeding. This is the immune response of dengue infection. We see here that uh, NS1, we can see from the first day of the fever, same like in the secondary. and. IgM in the five or third or five days, but in the secondary, the level, the NS, IgM level is not too high, not as high as a primary. So this is a mosquito bite. If somebody has fever, so perhaps the mosquito bite is four or seven days before. We know there's a culture for dengue virus. It needs time one to three weeks, and the instruments are expensive and need the skilled laboratory technician. So that's why it is uh, just for in the research, not for diagnosis. And how about for RT-PCR? Refractive test PCR, we still use for the conventional, but also we also have a real-time PCR. And but that's the success for depends on the timing of serum sample taking. Usually in three days, within in three or three days is uh, the best and need laboratory standardization. Now about the theological examination, the WHO still have uh, as hemagglutination inhibition test, HI test, but it is difficult to uh, make as a diagnosis because we, it needs two, two samples, acute samples, when the patient uh, come to the hospital and the seven days later, perhaps the patient already 
already at home convalescent or already die. So it's difficult to to have the convalescent sample. So to test the HI is it difficult. And dengue blood is it already uh, I think it's because it's come discontinued because we don't have again in a commercial kit in Indonesia. But we still have ELISA and also ICT. So ELISA and ICT still used for detection of IgM and IgG as well as NS1 antigen. We know that ICT is just qualitative, but in ELISA we can see quantitative. But usually the physician, the clinician, they like ICT because it's rapid. That is uh, interpretation of its eye test. We need uh, acute and convalescent Sera with the interval is seven days. If the titer below one to one thousand two hundred eighty, it could be acute primary. But more than one to two two thousand five hundred sixty is secondary, and the increase of titer more than five times. How about the ELISA? ELISA can. Uh, we use just a single serum, no need for per sera, but if we have per sera, the sensitivity and specificity will increase. How about the dengue rapid test? We know that dengue rapid test, uh, the method is immunochromatography. We call also lateral flow test or simply strip test that developed by Singer and Plots in 1956. And usually, uh, it is for screening test. We know that we can we can detect NS1, IgG, IgM in one strip. And now there is uh, IgA also, but it is not uh, still not popular in my country. The method of immunochromatography is uh, similar like ELISA, but we use uh, in a nitrocellulose membrane, and the result is qualitative. But pay attention on interpretation on rapid test because of in our research, uh, previous research in secondary infection, the appearance of IgG line is enough for showing secondary infection because we know that in the secondary infection, that is just the low titer of IgM level. So only 25 to 78% of positive IgM and acute secondary infection. But if the IgG is negative, but the positive just in IgM line, IgM line is found. So be careful, because it's not only primary infection, but if in the endemic area, like in my country, we have so many typhoid fever and also malaria, so it can also be false positive with suspicion of typhoid fever and malaria in endemic area, so that clinical science have to be taken into consideration. Now about the IgA anti dengue, I have to, to uh, research in 2013 with my students, the Teresa, and this my colleague, the Erwin Internes, internal medicine doctor. We conduct in 75 uh, samples with the immunochromatographic method. The objective is to assess the diagnostic performance of IgA anti dengue rapid test, such a new marker of dengue infection, and also. We use NS1 antigen, IgM, IgG, dengue with ELISA. And this is the principle of IgA anti-dengue immunochromatic method. We know in the in the nitrocellulose membrane, it coated by dengue virus. And then this is the sera that we suspicious of IgA anti-dengue from uh, human sera. And the conjugate is good anti-human IgA anti-dengue colloidal code label, and they give a color purpose pink color. And this is the interpretation of IgA anti-dengue immunochromatography. They have a intensity scale, color scale, from zero to two, zero to five, one to zero, and two point zero. 3.0 and the uh, consider positive as the color from from 0 to 2. We need there is a control line and this is a test line. 
What is the characteristic of dengue, uh, non dengue virus samples? We also uh, have uh, malaria samples, typhoid fever, hepatitis A, pneumonia, UTI, and also leptospirosis. And there is some of malaria, typhoid, and hepatitis uh, give the false positive. We look here the, in the figure that the frequency of the IgE. This is a day one to two. We look in, this is in a secondary infection because more than 80% uh, patient in Indonesia is already secondary infection. So IgA and IgG we can see in the, this is the first day, the first two, two days, but IgM still not yet. Still just 50%, but NS1 not yet. Even in the brochure, we know that uh, NS1 can detect from the day one. But in the day three or two, four, now we can, we can see IgA, IgG, and also IgM. But the NS1 still low. This is in secondary. This is uh, my previous research with Dr. Sri Kartikasari, also my student at the time. So we can see here in, here in primary infection, we look here, this is uh, NS1. We know that NS1 in primary infection is uh, good, uh, good marker. So we can use NS1, NS1, but in secondary, we better we use IgA, and then this is IgM number two, and then NS1. I said, uh, depend on the days. In my research, and it's one is better if we check in the day three or day four. So there's the positivity of IgE uh, in acute phase of secondary infection was the highest. This is the percentage of positive samples according to the days. So IgE RT, this is from 19, positive, uh, 18 is positive in the day one. So it is same, similar with the previous slide. This is the IgE, and then this is NS1 and IgG and IgM in the first day. See the sensitivity performance is in the acute samples, the IgE is uh, higher than IgM, and the third is IgG, and the last is NS1 in secondary. So because we know that uh, in an endemic country of dengue, usually we found the secondary infection. So uh, we look that the positivity percentage of IgA was high in the acute phase era of secondary infection, 91%. And according to the days onset of symptoms, IgA real, uh, rapid test can detect earlier than IgM and NS1. But precaution if positive for IgA, uh, similar with IgM, precaution for typhoid fever, malaria, and hepatitis because it can be false positive. This is the genetic sensitivity, 83.8, and the specificity, uh, 81.2.1. Sorry, this is the serological pattern in primary. We know that in the day one, day two, usually it is good if we we know from uh, the culture, the virus isolation and PCR also NS1. But NS1, uh, I think according to our research, we not recommended in the secondary infection in the first day because usually just in the three or four, four days, uh, uh, it will positive, but it will decrease uh, rapidly. We can look here in the primary, the IgM and the three or five days, but the IgA already positive. IgM can last uh, until three months to eight months, but IgA just in uh, 45 days. And the surgical pattern in secondary, this is uh, IgG already high in the second or third days, and also with IgA. And IgM, we know there's a low level of IgM, so if we can do uh, ELISA, it's better if we make a ratio between IgM over IgG. 
So this is my uh, our ongoing research. Uh, we have uh, kid for N1 dengue. There is uh, NS1, IgA, IgM, and IgG. Where's the where's the co-standard uh, PCR? Yeah. Okay. This is the this is the algorithm from our association. Teruji and in day one, two, three, four, seven. And also, this is diagram of rapid dentist test from government using for primary health center. If below five days, so using the S1 or IgA, and more than five days, IgM or IgG or IgA. So, for conclusion, uh, we we have aware to the which day of fever. So, we examine the complete blood count, leukopenia, thrombocytopenia. EST mode and ELT, and also serology NS1, IgG, IgM, and IgA. So we need to distinguish between primary and secondary, because we know that secondary is uh, more important, because can result in DSS. And then uh, we know that uh, for rapid test, it, it is not for follow-up treatment. And we know that anti dengue is not anti DSF because it can also positive and also and dengue fever also. IgA anti dengue rapid test can be considered as a new marker of dengue infection give the, given the high sensitivity, especially in acute phase and secondary infection. Thank you.